Welcome to Daily Scripture and Meditation with Shirley Sellis Jackson. We begin, as always, in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Welcome to Ash Wednesday 2021, the beginning of the holy season of Lent. Our Daily Prayer Lord Jesus, give me a lively faith, a firm hope, a fervent charity, and a great love of you. Take from me all lukewarmness in the meditation of your word and dullness in prayer. Give me fervor and delight in thinking of you and your grace, and fill me with compassion for others, especially those in need, that I may respond with generosity. Amen. Our daily scripture, but first, an overview regarding Ash Wednesday. Each Lent begins with a stirring call to repentance and a reminder of our immortality. But there is a great grace in this, for in Christ we do not have to wonder, where is our God? Because Jesus embraced our weakness and mortal nature, we can receive what is His. We become the very righteousness of God. We need not fear asking. A clean heart create for me, O God. For the Father, who is hidden, wants to give us the joy of our salvation. When we return to the Lord, it is always an acceptable time. It is always the day of salvation. In our first reading today, we hear, Rend your hearts, not your garments. A reading from the book of the prophet Joel, chapter 2, verse 12. Even now, says the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting and weeping and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For gracious and merciful is he, slow to anger, rich in kindness, and relenting in punishment. Perhaps he will again relent and leave behind him a blessing offerings and libation for the Lord your God. Blow the trumpet in Zion, proclaim a fast, call an assembly, gather the people, notify the congregation, assemble the elders, gather the children and the infants at the breasts. Let the bridegroom quit his room and the bride her chamber. Between the porch and the altar, let the priest, the ministers of the Lord, weep and say, Spare, O Lord, your people, and make not your heritage a reproach with the nations ruling over them. Why should they say among the peoples, Where is their God? Then the Lord was stirred to concern for his land and took pity on his people. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Psalm 51 Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. Have mercy on me, O God, in your goodness, in the greatness of your compassion, wipe out my offense. Thoroughly wash me from my guilt and of my sin, cleanse me. For I acknowledge my offense, and my sin is before me always. Against you only have I sinned and done what is evil in your sight. A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out of your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Give me back the joy of your salvation, and a willing spirit sustain in me. O Lord, open my lips, and my mouth shall proclaim your praise. Be merciful, O Lord, for we have sinned. In our second reading, Be reconciled to God. Behold, now is the acceptable time. A reading from the second letter of St. Paul to the Corinthians, chapter 5, verse 20. Brothers and sisters, we are ambassadors for Christ as if God were appealing through us. We implore you, on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. For our sake he made him to be sin who did not know sin, so that we might be the righteousness of God in him. Working together, then, 
we appeal to you not to receive the grace of God in vain, for he says, In an acceptable time I heard you, and on the day of salvation I helped you. Behold now is a very acceptable time. Behold now is the day of salvation. The Word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. During Lent, we refrain from Alleluia's and we have verses before the Gospel. If today you hear His voice, harden not your hearts. In our Gospel today, we hear about your Father who sees in secret will repay you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew chapter 6 verse 1. Jesus said to his disciples, Take care not to perform righteous deeds in order that people may see them. Otherwise, you will have no recompense from your heavenly Father. When you give alms, do not blow a trumpet before you, as the hypocrites do in the synagogues and in the streets to win the praise of others. Amen, I say to you, they have received their reward. But when you give alms, do not let your left hand know what your right hand is doing, so that your almsgiving may be secret, and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. When you pray, do not be like the hypocrites who love to stand and pray in the synagogues and on the street corners so that others may see them. Amen, I say to you. They have received their reward. But when you pray, go to your inner room, close the door, and pray to your Father in secret, and your Father, who sees in secret, will repay you. When you fast, do not look gloomy like the hypocrites. They neglect their appearance, so that they may appear to others to be fasting. Amen, I say to you. They have received their reward. And when you fast, anoint your head and wash your face, so that you may not appear to be fasting, except to your Father, who is hidden. And your Father who sees what is hidden, will repay you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. Meditation of the Day from the Magnificat Entitled, Why We Pray, Fast, and Give Alms Christian Asceticism never aims at annihilating life in us. On the contrary, its purpose is to liberate us. It does not imply any kind of condemnation of the things which it gives up, but simply an absolute preference for the one thing necessary. Luke 10.42 The Christian mortifies himself always to gain more life. Even when the moment arrives for him to complete his Eucharist, like the martyrs, by offering his own death joined to that of Jesus, he will do it joyfully because he will do it with resurrection in mind. What all asceticism aims at is the destruction of the obsessive concentration on self caused by sin. It aims at letting us be seized, invaded, and carried away by the generosity of God's life, the life which is love. It is the conflict between this love and the tendency in all of us which has caused our flesh and the world with us to curve inward, as it were. It is this tendency, that is, sin, that brought death into the world and all the pangs leading up to it. But God only allowed His work to be damaged like this because He knew how to find the remedy. 
asceticism in all its forms has therefore no other purpose but that of leading us to abandon ourselves in everything through faith to the love of God. It only seems to break us in order to raise us up and open our hearts. In everything, the Christian life will be marked by a continually expanding rhythm that moves from ever-renewed discoveries to ever-deeper renunciations. When in one sense the Christian no longer has anything, in another he has everything. But as long as he remains on earth, everything must continually be given up again, only to be found once more. The process must go on until we are ready for the total and definitive abandonment of death, that is, for the fullness of the resurrection. This was written by Father Louis Boyer who died in 2004 and was a French priest, theologian, author, and convert. Daily Bible Verse From the Laudate You are dust and will return to dust. Ash Wednesday, 2021 Remember, man, you are dust and to dust you will return. Let us reflect on four key messages from today's Ash Wednesday Scripture readings and note the messages. First, Yet even now, Oracle of the Lord, return to me with your whole heart, with fasting, weeping, and mourning. Rend your hearts, not your garments, and return to the Lord your God. For he is gracious and merciful, slow to anger, abounding in steadfast love, and relenting in punishment. Joel 2.12 Our second message A clean heart create for me, O God, and a steadfast spirit renew within me. Cast me not out from your presence, and your Holy Spirit take not from me. Psalm 51, 12 Our third message We are ambassadors for Christ, as if God were appealing through us. We implore you on behalf of Christ, be reconciled to God. 2 Corinthians 5, 20 Message number four When you give alms, Matthew 6 2 when you pray Matthew 6 5 but when you fast Matthew 6 6 conclusion Lent is about metanoia conversion Lent is about turning back to God through almsgiving fasting and prayer Lent is about evangelization through being ambassadors for Christ. Finally, Lent is about emerging at Easter with a holy, steadfast, and new spirit. The 40-day period of Lent is God's gift to us to become new creation. Reflections and actionable challenges from our scriptural readings come from the Laudate. Introductory Prayer Lord, you know how much I need you and depend on you. You know my weaknesses and my faults. I put all my confidence in your love and mercy in my daily actions. I hope to learn to trust more in your power your promise, and your grace. Lord, I wish to start this season of Lent with a sincere desire to grow in love, preparing myself worthily 
to separate the mysteries of your passion, death, and resurrection. Our Petition Lord, help me learn to change what needs to change in my life. Our First Challenge Prayer, Fasting, Almsgiving As we begin the Lenten season, we are reminded of the need to make reparation for our sins and be reconciled with God. Any attempt to build a spiritual life that neglects the pillars of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving is building on sand. Prayer purifies our intentions and relates all we do to God. Fasting detaches us from our comfort and from ourselves. Almsgiving reflects our brotherhood with the poor of Jesus' family and reminds us that our true wealth is not in things but in the love of God. We all need to do a reality check on our spiritual lives to make sure we are committed to prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Our second challenge, lose the show. Jesus is severe in criticizing the hypocrites who parade their works before others to get attention. Such parades are of no use in pleasing God or making up for our sins. They only add to our sinfulness. He encourages us to pray in private, to fast, and to give alms in secret, without calling the attention of others to what we are doing. In this way we can be sure we are doing all for love of God and not for love of self. Those who make an outward show of piety or generosity have already received their reward in this world, and they store up no treasure in heaven. Let us work silently and discreetly, with no other intention but pleasing God alone. Our third challenge, Joyful Sacrifice. Nothing brings us closer to Christ than walking alongside Him and doing the things He did for love of God the Father. During Lent, God invites us to purify our hearts and minds and to turn our intentions back to Him. Christ's public ministry was lived each day in loving obedience to the Father's will. Our Lenten program should reflect that same simple yet demanding obedience and love. What can I do for God today? What sacrifice can I offer that will be pleasing to Him? Once I decide on it, I will carry it out with no one else knowing. Conversation with Christ Jesus, give me the grace to begin this Lent with great enthusiasm and love. Help me live it with joy, knowing that I am living it in your presence to please you and you alone. Our Resolution I will make a Lenten program of prayer, fasting, and almsgiving. Continued Meditation Are you hungry for God and do you thirst for His holiness? God wants to set our hearts ablaze with the fire of His Holy Spirit that we may share in His holiness and radiate the joy of the gospel to those around us. St. Augustine of Hippo tells us that there are two kinds of people and two kinds of love. One is holy, the other is selfish. One is subject to God, the other endeavors to equal Him. We are what we love. God wants to free our hearts from all that would keep us captive to selfishness and sin. Rend your hearts and not your garments, says the prophet Joel, Joel 2, 12. The Holy Spirit is ever ready to transform our hearts and to lead us further in God's way of truth and holiness. Further Reflection and Actionable Challenges 
devoting our lives to God. Why did Jesus single out prayer, fasting, and almsgiving for his disciples? The Jews considered these three as the cardinal works of their religious life. These were seen as the key signs of a pious, godly person and the three great pillars on which the good life was based. Jesus pointed to the heart of the matter. Why do you pray fast and give alms? To draw attention to yourselves so that others may notice and think highly of you? Or to give glory to God? The Lord warns his disciples of self-seeking glory, the preoccupation with looking good and seeking praise from others. True piety is something more than feeling good or looking holy. True piety is loving devotion to God. It is an attitude of awe, reverence, worship, and obedience. It is a gift and working of the Holy Spirit that enables us to devote our lives to God with a holy desire to please Him in all things. Isaiah 11, 1 Fullness of Life with God our Father What is the sure reward which Jesus points out to His disciples? Is it communion with God our Father? In Him alone we find the fullness of life, happiness, and truth. May the prayer of Augustine of Hippo, recorded in his Confessions, be our prayer this Lent. When I am completely united to you, there will be no more sorrows or trials. Entirely full of you, my life will be complete. The Lord wants to renew us each day and give us new hearts of love and compassion. Do you want to grow in your love for God and for your neighbor? Seek Him expectantly in prayer with fasting and in generous giving to those in need. In the Wilderness of Prayer and Fasting with Jesus The Forty Days of Lent is the annual retreat of the people of God in imitation of Jesus' Forty Days in the Wilderness. Forty is a significant number in the Scriptures. Moses went to the mountain to seek the face of God for forty days in prayer and fasting. The people of Israel were in the wilderness for forty years in preparation for their entry into the Promised Land. Elijah fasted for forty days as he journeyed in the wilderness to the mountain of God. We are called to journey with the Lord in a special season of prayer, fasting, almsgiving, and penitence, expressing true sorrow for sin and wrongdoing, as we prepare to celebrate the Feast of Easter. The Christian Passover of Jesus' victory over sin, Satan, and death. Growing in lively faith, firm hope, and fervent charity. The Lord Jesus gives us spiritual food and supernatural strength, faith, hope, and love to seek His face and to prepare ourselves for spiritual combat and testing. We too must follow in the way of the cross in order to share in the victory of Christ's death and resurrection. As you begin this holy season of testing and preparation, ask the Lord Jesus for a fresh outpouring of His Holy Spirit so that you may grow in faith, hope, and love, and embrace His will more fully in your life. Lord Jesus, give me a lively faith, a firm hope, a fervent charity, and a great love of you. Take from me all lukewarmness in the meditation of your word and dullness in prayer. Give me fervor and delight in thinking of you and your grace and fill me with compassion for others, especially those in need, that I may respond with generosity. Amen. Meditation on Humble Holiness 
quote, For our sakes God made him who did not know sin to be sin, so that in him we might become the very holiness of God. Unquote. 2 Corinthians 5.21 How humbling of the immortal, all-holy Jesus to be mortal, and to be, as it were, sin. God made Jesus to be sin, sin that was cursed, sin that was to be vanquished. And he did this for our sake, so that we might become the very holiness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 Now, for his sake, we become humbled, so that others might become the holiness of God. The key is to humble our hearts before God. The Lord cannot resist a humbled, contrite heart. Psalm 51.19 That's his heart, humbled, even grieved. Genesis 6.6 6, As it were, ready to reach out and personally suffer, although innocent, so as to redeem a broken world. So the Church invites us to share in God's humility today through ashes, to share in God's grieving through prayerful groaning, Romans 8.26, to share in God's redeeming by our penance and acts of reparation. Will you share in Jesus' ministry of humility, grieving, and redemption? He has made you the very holiness of God. 2 Corinthians 5.21 So that you may be His ministers of reconciliation, His ambassadors. 2 Corinthians 5.18 An ambassador lives in a foreign nation, representing his or her people to another land. Can you humble yourself and represent God in those who do not know Him? Our prayer. Father, may I humble myself fully so as to exalt you to all. God's promise to us. Keep your deeds of mercy secret and your Father who sees in secret will repay you. Matthew 6, 4 Thomas A. Kempis quote from the Imitation of Christ Whatever a man cannot amend in himself or in others, he ought to bear with patiently until God ordain it otherwise. We are God's hands, feet, and voice. May his peace rest upon you as you go and announce the gospel of the Lord in your words and deeds. Thank you for joining today. Abundant blessings upon you and yours. Amen. We close as always in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>